Это сок. Я пью сок. Это вода. Я пью воду. Это журнал. Я читаю журнал. Это книга. Я читаю книгу. Привет, друзья, and welcome to Russian Readers. And we're continuing our series of videos on the Russian cases. And in today's video, we'll talk about the accusative case. So if you've been watching our videos in the order we've been posting them, then you may know that we have already spoken briefly about the nominative case and the prepositional case. And in those videos, I mentioned that as far as singular nouns go, the nominative case is certainly the easiest and the prepositional case is the second easiest case in Russian. And if you ask me, the accusative case is actually the third easiest case after nominative and prepositional. Again, if you ask at the traditional uh, way, traditional order that the Russian cases are listed, uh, the accusative case is uh, not, you know, the third or the second or anything. So we just uh, take them by the level of difficulty uh, for nouns anyway. And since this is the first uh, video on the accusative case that we're making, again, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to speak about nouns. We're not going to touch on adjectives or pronouns or any other parts of speech. But uh, as far as nouns go, we'll talk about both singular and plural nouns because both singular and plural nouns in the accusative case have very easy forms. However, there is a bit of a nuance that you all have to know about the accusative case. Accusative case is the only case in Russian in which it actually matters whether your nouns are animate or inanimate. In none of the other cases it matters in Russian, but in the accusative case it actually matters quite a bit. So in this video, yes, we'll speak about both singular and plural nouns, but we'll only speak about inanimate nouns. So no people, no creatures, pets, animals, just objects or things. And don't worry, guys, of course, we'll cover animate nouns in one of the future videos. But again, in this video, we're just going to look at the inanimate nouns with the accusative case. So do you guys remember what two things or two aspects you need to learn? You need to memorize about each new case that you learn. That's right. You need to learn its meaning or uses. In other words, when you would actually use this case, when you would apply this case in your sentences, right? And the second thing is the endings or the actual form, right? What endings do you add for nouns, adjectives, etc. Again, in this video, we're only talking about nouns, though. So what's the general meaning? What's the primary meaning of the accusative case? Again, guys, remember, all cases have usually more than one meaning or more than one use. Uh, but in these first videos, we're just looking at the general primary meaning of each case. So what is it for the accusative case? So for the accusative case, the primary meaning is the direct object. So what is the direct object? A direct object is what you apply your action to directly in the sentence. In other words, a direct object is a thing that you do something to. For example, if you have a sentence, I eat pizza, right? I would be the subject. So that's the person who does the action. And then eat is the verb, uh, which is the action, right? And then the pizza would be your direct object because you're doing something directly to the pizza. So the, your action is directed at the pizza. So pizza is your direct object. Some other examples. Um, I drink water, right? So water is your direct object because you drink it. I am reading a book. Uh, so a book is your direct object. I am listening to music. Again, music is your direct object. Please keep in mind that your action does not have to be physical or observable, right? So it can be something more abstract uh, or not even an action per se, right? For example, if you say, I like um, music, right? Or I like rock music. So rock music would still be your object, direct object, even though like technically is not an action, right? But it's still a verb that is directed to your object. So music is the object of your liking. Or for example, you can say, I want a car, right? Or I need a car, right? So I want what? A car. This is a direct object 
again even though there is no observable physical action per se. So the primary meaning of the accusative case is pretty straightforward, right? Just put your noun in the accusative case whenever it's used as a direct object. So what about the form or the endings of the accusative case, right? And let me remind you guys that, again, in this video we're only talking about inanimate objects. And this is where I have the good news for you. So for inanimate objects, masculine, neuter, and plural nouns fully coincide with the nominative case. So what do I mean by coincide? I mean they match, they're identical, they overlap, if you will, with the nominative case. So they look no different from the nominative case. So let's look at some examples. Let's take a common masculine noun, for example, butterbrot, right, a sandwich. Uh, in the nominative case, you would say, это butterbrot, this is a sandwich, right? In the accusative case, you would say, я ем бутерброд, I am eating a sandwich, right? So even though a sandwich in this sentence is used as a direct object, and technically it is in the accusative case, it looks exactly the same as the nominative case. So guys, very important, if you say я ем бутерброд, the word бутерброд is still in the accusative case. It does not mean it's in the nominative case. It just means that the accusative case looks exactly the same as the nominative case in this form. Let's take another masculine noun, журнал, right, a magazine. Uh, again, in the nominative case, it would just be это журнал, this is a magazine. And then if you're doing something to it, for example, you're reading it, you would say я читаю журнал. Again, you can see there's no difference. Another example, uh, дом, right, a house. In the nominative case, you would say это дом, this is a house. And in the accusative, for example, you could say я вижу дом, right, I see what, a house. It is a direct object, it is an accusative case, but the form is exactly the same as the nominative. So, let's look at some neuter nouns. Um, let's take яблоко, right, uh, это яблоко, this is an apple, я ем яблоко. Again, no difference. Это молоко. This is milk. Я пью молоко. I am drinking milk. And let's look at some plural examples. Again, uh, inanimate plural nouns look exactly the same in both nominative and accusative. Uh, for instance, uh, бутерброды, right, uh, sandwiches. Uh, это бутерброды, these are sandwiches, nominative case, accusative. Я ем бутерброды, right, I'm eating sandwiches. Um, это яблоки, these are apples. Я ем яблоки, right, no difference. Uh, это журналы, these are magazines. Я читаю журналы, I am reading magazines, or I read magazines. So, what happened to the feminine nouns in the accusative? Well, have you guys ever heard sentences like Я слушаю музыку, or я читаю книгу, or я пью воду, and you wonder, you know, why it changes like that, why вода becomes воду, or музыка becomes музыку, or книга becomes книгу. Well, this is why, this is because you put them in the accusative case. So yes, guys, you will see feminine nouns in Russian uh, that you know most of the time end in an A, change that A ending to U in the accusative case. But you may also know that some feminine nouns end in ya or even the soft sign. So uh, remember the simple rule for the accusative case feminine noun. A to u, ya to you, soft sign doesn't change. Let's say it together. A to u, ya to you, soft sign doesn't change. So let's look at some examples. Uh, pizza, for example, right? Not a purely Russian word, but uh, still a very popular food. So in the nominative case, you would say это pizza. This is pizza. But я ем pizzu. I am eating pizza because uh, pizza is a direct object because you're eating it. Another example. Вода. Water. Nominative case. Это вода. This is water. Uh, accusative case. Я пью воду, I am drinking water, and here you can also see that there is a stress shift, right, so you will see it quite a bit, 
uh, when you change the case of a noun, um, oftentimes the stress will shift as well. So it's vada in the nominative case, but vodu in the accusative case. Well, let's look at a couple of examples with ya, right? Uh, for example, piesnya, right, is a song. So in Russian you would say eta piesnya. This is a song, just an example in the nominative. But ya slushayu piesnyu. I'm listening to a song. And we can see that your ya changes to you. Another example, simya, family. Uh, это семья, this is a family, but someone might say, я хочу семью, I want a family, right? And again, even though it's not a physical action, this is still a direct object, and your я changes to you. And finally, feminine nouns ending in a soft sign uh, do not change in the accusative case. So let's look at some examples. Um, осень, right, the fall, and this is a feminine noun in Russian. Uh, you could say, это осень, this is a fall, <laughs> or you could say, я люблю осень, I love or I like fall. Another common example is дверь, uh, door, right, it's, again, it's a feminine noun ending in a soft sign, so you could say, uh, это дверь, in the nominative case, or я закрываю дверь, I'm closing the door. In this case, the door is your direct object, but there is no uh, change. And just a reminder that plural nouns, as long as they're inanimate in the accusative, don't change, even if they're originally feminine. That doesn't matter. So you could say, я читаю книги, I'm reading books, or я закрываю двери, I'm closing doors. So you just go by the uh, basically nominative plural. And now, let me test you real quick. I will give you a few nouns, and you will try to use them in the accusative case. Our first noun is gazeta, gazeta, newspaper. So, how would you say, for example, uh, I'm reading a newspaper, ya читаю, how would you change the word gazeta? Uh, you can pause the video, but for this and further examples, I'm going to give you the answers in just a couple of seconds. So, of course, you would say, я читаю газету, right? Because газета is a direct object, it is feminine, ends in an a, and a changes to u. Another example is film, right? A movie or a film. Film. So, how would you say, I'm watching a movie? I'm watching is, я смотрю. So, what would be the correct form of film? Well, it would also be film, of course, right? Because film is masculine, so it does not change in the accusative case. So, I'm watching a movie, would be я смотрю фильм. Another example, банан. How would you say I'm eating a banana? Я ем. And the correct answer is я ем банан. Yes, guys, in Russian, banan is masculine. I know it is banana in English, so it kind of sounds feminine from the Russian perspective, but in Russian it's banan, ends in a consonant. It is masculine and there is no change in the accusative case. Мороженое, uh, ice cream. So, how would you say I like ice cream? Я люблю. The correct answer, я люблю мороженое. Мороженое is uh, a neuter noun and it does not change in the accusative case. Машина, a car. How would you say I am buying a car? I'm buying would be я покупаю and the car would be your direct object. So, how would you say I'm buying a car? You would say, я покупаю машину, right? Because машина is feminine and а changes to у. Тетрадь. Тетрадь is a feminine noun ending in a soft sign and it means a notebook, like a, a notebook that you write in. So, imagine you see a notebook, right? Uh, it would be the direct object of your seeing. <laughs> so, how would you see how would you say, I see a notebook? Я вижу, correct answer, я вижу тетрадь. Because even though it's a feminine noun, it ends in a soft sign. And remember the rule, а to у, я to you. Soft sign doesn't change. And last example, вино, wine. So how would you say, I'm drinking wine? Я пью, and the correct answer is, я пью 
вино. Вино is a typical neuter noun and it does not change in the accusative case. Okay, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. Remember, you can ask us any questions in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our app, uh, Russian Readers. Uh, we have a lot of great stories uh, that will help you learn uh, both vocabulary and grammar. We also have grammar guide stories that specifically help you learn cases on simple everyday examples. Um, I will see you next time. Thank you all for watching. Спасибо. And until then, пока-пока.